Hey guys, John Rettinger here. When Google first unleashed Android, they let out one of the first mass adopted open source mobile platforms the world had really ever seen. It was very uh, highly customizable, it had a great user interface, but it lacked the polish and refinement, I feel, of some of its competition because they had had generations upon generations to refine the user experience. So what we have now with the Motorola Droid is Android 2.0 that really catches Android up in terms of user look and feel and polish, and also brings with it some very welcome features and upgrades that I think almost separate Android from the rest of the pack. Let's go ahead and get started, and what you're gonna see now is an overview of Android 2.0, demonstrated here on the Motorola Droid, so you can see what to expect when your current device gets the upgrade to 2.0, or whether you pick up a Motorola Droid yourself. So the first thing you're gonna take a look at is what you're gonna see all the time, the unlock screen. So if you've used a stock with Google Android device in the past, you thought the unlock screen was pretty simple. You hit the menu button and you unlocked it. Nothing really fancy or anything to see there. Devices like the iPhone or the Palm Pre had some fancy slide to unlock functionality that the Droid and Android in particular didn't have. But now we do and we also have some added functionality as well. So to unlock, you slide that to unlock. However, there's some more functionality built into that as well. If you want to change the phone from vibrate to ring or vice versa, you slide it the other direction. So now sound is turned on. I do it one more time. Sound is now turned off. Kind of nice, nice and uh, simple to use. So slide that the other direction. And here we've got the familiar home screen that you've seen on previous Android devices. Now I should mention there's a difference between Android devices. There are devices that are technically with Google, you can see right down there, and that means devices that have the stock Android operating system. And then there are those like the HTC Hero that aren't with Google, and they could put their own skins on top of it. This is an overview of just the stock Android uh, interface. So the icons look a little bit smoother, the menus are behaving a little bit faster, and that may be due just to the hardware on the Droid, but I'm going to assume that there was a lot of optimization that went into uh, this upgrade. The previous version that was the newest version of uh, Android was 1.6, and of course this is 1.2. So let me show you, or 2.0 rather. So let me show you some of the cool things that come with 2.0. One of the things I always liked about Android was the ability to add widgets to your home screen. For those of you who don't know what widgets are, think of it like dashboard for your Mac or gadgets for your PC. They're little sort of mini programs that have limited functionality but can help the user do little things that they become accustomed to. So let me show you what's new here. To go ahead and tap the home screen, I get a new widgets bar. And here I got some things that are quite new. So you see one right there called corporate calendar. And that's because the with Google phones now support full exchange connectivity. So for email, calendar, contacts, everything, you now have full exchange connectivity. And that's important for business users. This makes an Android device really uh, have a broader appeal. People that were relied on Exchange had a very difficult time adopting the platform. And with that Exchange connectivity in Android 2.0, you're also going to get a unified mailbox where all your mail messages from different accounts will go into. That's something we've seen on the Palm Pre, but previously had not seen on an Android device. So back to the widgets. You now got a new Facebook widget with a new Facebook application found in the Android marketplace. If I was signed in here, I'd see my newsfeed, what my friends were up to, and I could post messages right from this widget. If you're a big Facebook user, it's a very cool thing to see. So some of the other widgets that are new that are extremely useful, one called Power Control. And this one lets you control, obviously, the wireless functionality of your device, see where your power is at, and lets you turn off different radios. And probably one of the last new and I think most useful widgets is YouTube. YouTube is obviously owned by Google, so having some increased YouTube functionality clearly makes sense. So let me show you what this widget looks like. You now have one touch access to YouTube video search or YouTube video upload, which in the Droid's case is very cool. It's got a five megapixel camera that you can now record video with and upload right to YouTube just by hitting that little camera button. You sign into your account, you hit upload, and boom, your videos will show up. And you can do that all over 3G, which is quite neat. Uh, and speaking of over 3G, the Amazon MP3 store, which was previously Wi-Fi only, can now be accessed over 3G. So for those of you that download music via Amazon, it's going to be a very welcome uh, change for you. 
So speaking of camera, which we talked about just a minute ago, let me show you some of the new camera functionality found in Android 2.0. So again, this is going to take advantage of the 5 megapixel sensor found on the Droid. So you can see that there's a functionality there. But if you go into the menu and settings, you now have some advanced settings that's previously not found on Android devices. Things like focus mode, picture quality, picture size, store location was there before, color effect, white balance, scene mode, and flash. This one has an LED flash. So you've got a lot more ways to tweak your pictures and a way to make the device more your own. And that's really what 2.0 is about, bringing new features in to help make the device more customizable for you. And speaking of customizable for you, also in Android 2.0 and the accessibility options, you're gonna get the ability to do some uh, voice over text. So if you're hard of hearing, it's gonna be something that's going to be quite nice to you. The phone actually will speak the menu options to you. Let's go back to the home screen. And let's take a look at the Android Marketplace. The upgrade from 1.5 to 1.6 brought some nice updates to the Android Marketplace and that continues with 2.0. Let me show you what you're going to get when you log into the Marketplace. So go ahead and click one of the applications and what I like most about this is most of them are free. So I'll open up wp to go I get some information about it, I get screenshots, some comments, and ratings, and I get more applications about the developer or from the developer. I can view the developer's web page or even send an email to the developer. And some applications even give you the phone number to contact the developer, which is quite interesting. And you can flag it as inappropriate if you'd like. So, but probably the biggest welcome addition to 2.0 is this new navigation feature, and it's just in beta and it's found only right now on the Motorola Droid. It does turn-by-turn -turn navigation, similar to what you find on TomTom or Garmin devices. However, it is completely free. Now, I'm going to do a separate video showing the intricacies of how this works and walk you through it step-by-step, step, but I want to show you very quickly what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and hit Car Home, and you get sort of a new bar-looking interface where you can use voice search, so I could type it in and say, drive to South Coast Plaza, which is a, a mall by me, and automatically find South Coast Plaza via search and would route me there and give me turn-by-turn -turn directions uh, with voice over text. And again, there'll be a full video on this, but I wanted to show you what the interface looked like. So speaking of voice over text, that is a big thing with 2.0 is voice search. So let me show you how that works. So obviously you can search normally, you can type it in if you'd like, or if you hit that little microphone up there, it opens up a voice search. Techno Buffalo. And I'm actually surprised with how quickly that it works. So let me just go back one more time. It... Techno Buffalo. I had been speaking through the first time. And there you go, it finds Techno Buffalo's homepage and all kinds of information about Techno Buffalo. I'm actually really impressed with how well this works. If you don't always have time to type in what you're looking for or you're not that accurate typing and you want to do a search, you can use the voice search for really almost anything through the phone and it works quite well. Uh, also in Android 2.0 is some improvements to the web browser like you're seeing me use right now. Again, I'll be doing a separate video on the web browser and comparing it to other devices, but suffice to say it's a very improved experience. You still don't have multi-touch support for pinch and zoom, but you're getting a very capable, very quick browser. And I'm really impressed with what Google has done uh, with the browser that's found on the Droid and found on Android 2.0. So guys, in the interest of brevity, before this becomes a 20 minute video, just wanted to talk to you about what you got with Android 2.0 and what you would expect if you upgraded to 2.0 and what some of the differences are with sort of the outgoing 1.6 devices. So hope you enjoyed. For exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers And to learn more about Techno Buffalo, which is launching tomorrow, November 2nd, check out technobuffalo.com. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.